Hi everybody and welcome to Figuring Things Out on the Internet with Melissa Wilkinson. I'm here today to demonstrate how to make a Photoshop pastiche for your next assignment. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to instruct you how to do this Google search for your artists. You'll note on your instructions page that there are several artists for you to look up and hopefully you'll enjoy while perusing them uh, and choosing ones that appeal to you. Um, when you do a Google image search, uh, you simply type in one of your artists, go to images, go to tools, and make sure that your size is large. So when I'm perusing through these images, I'll find sizes that are appropriate in pixelation that will not um, be poor resolution for my print because I'm gonna ask that you work uh, from a print from this. So once you've done all that and you've found several artists to deal with, which I have, you just simply drag and drop your images onto uh, your desktop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select all of them and drag them into my Photoshop. And when I do that, they'll all open up I've got several to deal with. Um, and what I'm going to do is kind of segregate them over to the side for use when I'm ready for them. And I've got a little Jeff Koons there, a Yumin June. I've got an Eberhard Havakost. And then I've got a uh, Ruth Root over here and Monique Prieto there. So I'll just minimize those and get those out of the way. And I want you to play with, once you have an image, uh, you'll notice that there's a palette over here with all of your tools. And you really only have to know a few tools to work with on this. Um, so the very first thing that I want you to do is I want you to create a, you know, an eight by 10 print or so. And I've got one already created. So over here, you'll have the width and the height. So eight and a half by 11 is the size of your print. You want 300 resolution per pixels per square inch, okay? Not pixels per centimeter, but pixels per square inch. CMYK color is good for your print. Um, you go RGB if you are just doing a screen. So CMYK and make sure your background is white Then create that. Once you've created that, you can start to drag and drop all of your images onto that. Now I want you to alter these images and play with the filters. So I've got this image here, but I really want to kind of see what a filter gallery can give me. So after I drop that into my filter gallery, I can play with what this will look like using the varying forms of the palette or the, um, sorry, the filters. And there are plenty here as you can see. So I particularly like the cutout tool and I can play with the number of levels there. So you're really gonna have to take your time to figure out what you wanna do in an image. And so I've altered it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just basically gonna use that as my backdrop. And once I drop it into my field, I want to press Command T at the same time in order to get my handlebars up. And once I do that, I can simply press caps lock and pull at the edge in order to, so I'm pressing caps lock and I'm making the image larger. Find a place for that, press enter. And I like that as a background. I can also play with things like the color. So I can go to image, adjustments, and I can go to things like invert. I can, if I don't like that, just simply go to edit and undo. I can go to image adjustments again and play with things like, oh, the color balance. If I don't like all the blues, I can pump up the yellow. I can make it even bluer. I can make it magenta if I want. Um, and I can play with all these things while just messing with all of the settings. So I'm fine with that. That works good. Um, I can also paint an area. So if I go over here into my palette, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the quick selection tool, or I can go to the magic wand tool, which is probably easier for what I want to do. I press on an area and it will select that whole area. 
And you notice there's a little paintbrush here. And I want to paint there. But I don't like the color here. So the color down here is what I'm going to actually paint. Let's try hot pink. And so I select the area that I want. And I like that. Okay. And then I'm going to paint. Paint the whole thing. And I like that. Feel good about that. And it's only going to paint where I have selected. Now, I need to deselect that area, deselect, before I move on to the next stage. And so the next stage is going to be me uh, dropping an image, yet another image, onto, so I'm dragging this image and dropping it onto my surface here. Now again, I need to bring up the little handlebars. So I go to Command and then press T. And you see the handlebars come up and I can just pull it. And if I don't, if I want to pull it and actually distort it, I can click Caps Lock and it will allow me to pull it any way I want. I can also turn it if I'd like. I can leave it skewed. I can make it as big or as small as I'd like. Then what I can do is I can go back to that magic tool or that magic wand and I can select an area and delete. I don't like that red. I'm going to take that red out. I don't like that brown. I can also select, and so I'm basically just pressing delete. I can select this sort of like very light peach tone and then I can move it. So I just go up to my move tool and I move it. And I press enter. And then I deselect. So I'm ready for my next stage. So the next stage is just to find another one of those images that I moved away. So I'm going to deselect these that I don't want anymore. And I might draw, drag and drop this. It's a little small, so I have to make it bigger. So again, Command T. I pull at those handlebars. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select and delete, select and delete. So I'm basically playing a very, very quick game of collage. And I'm sort of haphazardly doing this. You can do it with a little bit more, more practice and a little bit more consideration as you get better. But I'm just basically utilizing the shapes. I can also select an area and just erase certain areas. So here's an erase tool. And you see how big that's going to erase, so I can actually make that size much smaller. And I can do something like that. And then I deselect. So I feel good about that. I'm going to move to the next layer. And I know I'd like to end uh, on this image, but I think I might pull this Jeff Koons image. But I really only want to select the actual sculpture in this. And so what I can do is I can select the background with my magic wand tool. And then I can inverse the selection so it, it selects only the sculpture itself. Then I can go to my Move tool. I can drag and drop that. And I can also bring up its handlebars as well. So Command T. And then I just pull it and make it bigger. Press Enter. And I'm ready for the next layer. I can select areas and delete them. I might do that because I don't like how full that is. So I'm selecting areas using my magic wand tool. And then I'm ready to deselect that. I'm ready for my next layer. So I want to end on this human June portrait. That's very appealing to me. But I want to change it. I don't want it to be... Um, I don't, I'll just drag and drop it into the field here and then it'll open up that solo image. So I just dragged and dropped it, not onto the image here, but I dragged and dropped it onto this little palette area, this little showcase area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna change the coloration of that. So I'm gonna get image, I'm gonna go to adjustments, and then I might, I don't know, I might play with uh, the, Maybe the threshold? Nah, I don't like that. Uh, I'll play with perhaps the 
selective color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make those adjustments. start to move things around to get a little bit different. Just playing with the colors and seeing what I can do with that. Take away the magenta there. Make a more of a sort of fleshy color instead of that pink if I want to. I can play with the absolute method there. Just adjust that to when I like it. I'm also going to throw a filter on that so I can go to the filter gallery and look at all of them or I can go to the ones I know that I like so I might like stylize and find edges something like that um, but I am for this purpose going to go to the filter gallery um, and it'll automatically do the last thing I did so I don't like that so let's go to filter gallery and cut out and I'm going to change the amount of levels on that so it just flattens it out for me. I like the edge simplicity so I can change the edge simpl simplicity there and I'll press OK. Move that over here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop him onto that surface. I'll bring up my handlebars. I will press caps lock in order to not distort him as I make him larger. Situate him where I want him. Press enter. Then I will wantonly select areas using my magic wand tool. Or I can also, just double clicking, uh, do the quick selection tool, which will pick up a larger area. So if I want to, I can just pick up a much larger area. I don't like that. Edit, undo, clear. So anything that you do, you can undo. So if I don't like where it's selected, I'll just take that out. And I really prefer the uh, magic wand tool. I feel like I'll have a little bit more control over that. So I want this to remain a kind of abstracted image. I think I'll take that out. I currently have a horrific image um, that I think is an interesting image that I might be wanting to paint. I, I will make probably three or four of these before I actually can commit. commit. Um, and if I don't like the placement of him, what I can do is I can go Command T, find the handlebars, and I can turn him upside down if I want to. And I think I might like that better, so we'll move him there. I'll press Enter. And then what I'll do is I'll go to Image, image rotation and I'll turn it 180 degrees. So I think I like that better. Um, it looks like he has tonsils here and so basically I'm just sort of cutting and pasting as I go. When I'm ready to save the image that I like, I'll make a, a few of these like I said. I go to file, save as, and I'm just going to save it on my desktop for easy use. I'm not going to save this as a Photoshop document. I will save it as a JPEG, just a simple JPEG right here. I'll title it uh, Mockup 1, and I save it. Once I've done that, I make a print of it, and now I'm ready to roll in using that as my mockup to make my next painting. And I am good to go. So if you have any questions, just let me know. But remember, you can do all of this with, with prints and paper if you elect to. Um, but this is the simplest, uh, fastest way to do it. And you should all get a little bit more comfortable with Photoshop as you progress as painters. So it's a wonderful tool. And thank you so much for your attention. Signing off. Bye-bye.